Domo greetings. Uh, my name is Rahula and I'm one of Bante Chandana's students. And just before you get to listen to one of his amazing discourses, um, I just wanted to share with you that Bante is a, a wandering monk. So he has no home and he purely relies on donations um, of dana by followers and by the community to survive just for the bare essentials. So if you feel of value, please feel free to share after the video and enjoy. Thank you. Actions. Murkamma. What typically in the world is known as karma. Are, are basic actions. Usually, people look upon kamma as something else, like the outcomes of things. What we call vipaka, or the fruits of our past actions. Intentionally committed actions. Often, these are neglected to be properly considered to have a proper place in one's awareness in our daily you know day-to-day -day life we must take ownership of our kamma must in order for you to be truly living It's quite liberating, in fact, to see and to acknowledge, yes, what I am today experiencing is the result of my action. Not necessarily from lifetimes earlier, but even from five minutes ago. My decision to sit here versus over there. My intention to eat this versus that. If something doesn't agree with me, my stomach, let's say, and I go ahead and eat that nonetheless, now the body is going to put me through some difficult states. You can go ahead and complain about, well, my body, my body, oh, my, my genetic makeup, my constitution, oh, the chef, the cook, the place that I got, whatever I ate, the restaurant, the fast food, or it was spoiled. All these things people end up pointing the finger at but somehow neglect to consider the role they have had in selecting that action versus a set of others. Now, typically the mind has a tendency of going and looking at kamma or bringing it to the forefront of one's experience or acknowledge at least kamma when things aren't going so well, when things aren't going according to what we would like, oh, how come I, I never get what I want? Or how come I always have to deal with these, you know, uncomfortable or, or unpleasant sets of, you know, circumstances versus what I want? Don't I deserve it? They have it. I'll come on. So then you fall into the trap of attributing this role to these invisible things, God's higher power or God. 
Why do you have to put me through this? Oh God, that type of story. Again though, this is an unhealthy attitude to have. It lacks discernment, it lacks wisdom, it lacks responsibility, it lacks ownership of one's own actions, which, again, the term is kamma. It is liberating to acknowledge that you are today as a result of You're the living embodiment of the collections of intentionally committed actions. Not just from past lives only, but you know you were born, right? That's why you're alive. Since as far back as you remember, you have been taking steps. You have had intentions which you try to put life into and and enact, put them into action, just in this life. So you don't have to be thinking, oh, you know, I don't agree with rebirth concept, this and that. Well, you do have this life, and you have been living this life. Many of the circumstances that you have found yourself in have been the results of your actions. If you notice, I'm addressing this in different ways from different sides because this is a big, big hurdle. Not understanding this, that is. A hurdle, an obstacle, because It keeps people stuck. People are in a rut. They can't get out. Because we still do not give ourselves the power. We don't acknowledge the power we have. We don't acknowledge the the authorship of our life and how the life that we are, you know, the possessors of this so long as you're still alive. Who's the author of that? It's the easiest thing in the world to just point at something outside of you. Some relationship. Health, that's a big one, right? Excuse me. People look at their health and they say, well, I have blood pressure. Oh, my, my parents or my dad or my sister or my mother or somebody has diabetes. Oh, it runs in the family. There might be some actual, you know, data to 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 prove that, shall we say, but ultimately, even those are the results of kamma. So how you acknowledge that, that's going to be the quotient, that's going to be the measure with which you could have more appreciation of your role in how much happiness you have versus how much lack of happiness there is in your life. Because the outside circumstances are always going to be the outside circumstances. Happiness cannot be dependent on outside circumstances. But that's the world that we live in. Everybody is pointing in that direction. The books you've read throughout your life, 
It's all about the outside, the grass over there, the fields of you know green and the blue skies and the clouds, beautiful fluffy white clouds and the waterfall, all these images. We have a lack in, we, we truly lack the sense of acknowledgement. And so long as we are striving to be happy, we shouldn't shun, we shouldn't shy away from acknowledging the fact that we inherit our actions. That's the only possessions we, possession that we have. This is not my, you know, thing. It's Lord Buddha talks about this throughout the discourses. He says that's the only possession you have, in fact, the only inheritance, the only thing that you will end up with is your action. Now, there's also the positive side of that. And it is by all means for you to enjoy and to acknowledge. So if you have two working eyes, if you have a nose that works, allows you to breathe through, if you have taste buds, if you have a full set of teeth, if you don't have any limbs missing from your body, if you're able to listen to this recording, if you're able to process it, understanding, question it, argue, disagree with the whole thing, come up with you know, con you know, things that you think need to be contradicted. It conflicts with your own ideologies, etc. Guess what? All these are also the results of you having had or the collections of intention, intentional actions you have committed yourself at one point or another, which allowed you to be in a position to see with those two eyes, to breathe with those nostrils in your nose, to be able to use your wrists. Have you ever spoken to someone who has rheumatoid arthritis? Who, who cannot move their fingers? Who cannot get up from their seat? without a walker or someone helping them? Or have excruciating pain in their spine? Those are also opportunities for you to take a moment to acknowledge that. So this also can turn your life into a joyful series of events on a daily basis. It's like being in an amusement park as a kid because there's so many opportunities for you to appreciate your state of being. Now this is necessary. This is healing. This is, is it has become as important as breathing good, clean air to have a, and maintain a good, healthy body, have a healthy life. This is as important to be acknowledging these facts about your existence. The ability to understand uh, this, for example, to comprehend to logically process these ideas and make them into coherent, you know, chain of thoughts 
that you can process and you can grow with and agree with, etc., or disagree with, doesn't matter, but you're pondering them. That means your brain is working, which is wonderful. Go and speak with someone or try to connect with or just to understand what a person who is in a coma go, is going through. Or someone who has um, amnesia. Or someone is going through schizophrenia. Or someone who is so deluded, he had to be or she had to be put away because they have become um, a completely, um, um, you know, a dangerous uh, presence for society, their loved ones. They could snap any moment, they could kill people. You don't have that. That's a good thing. You have self-control. Guess what? That is action. Throughout the years, people have asked me in different parts of the world, well, how come that child was born with, uh, you know, uh, one leg shorter than the other? Or, you know, she's born without any hands. Or why did this child, you know, end up without, you know, eyesight? They're blind. Again, here is, you know, the, the, it's, it's, uh, the person, the questioner, is already upset at the unfairness of life, which is already indicative of the fact that in their mind they think that there are outside conditions outside of this person who is basically a victim something happened to them that is deluded way of thinking because that does not adhere to the factual foundation of what kamma is, what action is. Again, by action, we're specifically talking about intentional actions, where there is an act, there is an author. It is oneself. So that blind child at birth didn't just, there was no mishap, ultimately, of something happen, happening where they, oops, sorry, he ended up not having eyesight while his brother has, or the neighbor's newborn has. They have done things intentionally where they deprived others of eyesight. Now, sometimes people want specifics, and sometimes they ask, like, really, um, you know, grotesque type of questions, like, how do you know, type of a thing. Or, um, and they, they throw something else at you, this and that, so... But that's very infantile because they're missing the point and they're trying to now argue without really understanding the mechanism of action producing a reaction. They might understand that intellectually or even in the terms of mathematics or physics, which they don't lie, by the way, or Newtonian physics even, even Newtonian physics. They still will accept that, but when it comes to kamma and, you know, them poking their own eye out intentionally by some stupid action that they've committed, they still will not understand 
the down-to-earthness, if you will, the matter-of-factness of kamma. If you didn't touch that hot stove, you would not have burnt your hand. Now expand that through the decades, through lifetimes, and you get a better understanding of what kamma is. If you go ahead and splurge, if you have worked your life, throughout your life, worked hard to have some money, have some savings, and then you go ahead and waste it away. You go gamble it away or you buy one car after the other, one house after the other. Guess what? We've seen, you know, people have, have talked to me about and they published, you know, printed stuff on, on magazines and things where you hear about these celebrities. This was happening in the 80s and 90s where you have somebody who just all of a sudden becomes incredibly rich, famous, and they don't know what to do with all that money. So they start splurging. They start spending it on this mansion, that, and this. And all of a sudden, within a very short time, the money's gone. Well, how did it go? Where did it go? Well, they, lacking discernment, went ahead and committed a series of intentional actions where they deliberately did things that ended up sending them back to the unemployment line where people came in and took away their houses, their belongings, their cars, this and that. So, again, that is the negative aspect, but when you are looking at yourself, when you are, especially when you're becoming pessimistic in your ways of thinking, when you are really criticizing yourself, why does this happen to me, or why am I not being understood, or, you know, having a negative undertones, your voice, and your thinking especially, so you're emotionally bankrupting yourself. Take a moment and look down, literally, look down. If you're sitting, look down at your feet. If you can't see them, you know, pull away the chair, away from the desk and just look down and now you're seeing your knees now you're seeing your your feet if you have feet look at your feet and if there's nobody around you're in your office get you know take off your shoes if possible take off your socks for for a moment wiggle your toes how many toes do you have wiggle them can you wiggle them? Oh my, you mean to say that you are not paralyzed? You can actually move them with the intention to move them and they move? Wow! Probably there are millions of people in the world who cannot do that. We need to acknowledge these things. Simple things. Have a mirror on your desk. If you don't have a desk, you don't have an office, get a mirror and put it next to your door before you leave your apartment, your house. Look at yourself in the mirror and say something nice. Before someone else says to us something nice about ourselves or to make us feel good, get to the habit of hearing it first coming from you. There you go. That's kamma. And the effect is, I guarantee it, immediate. You don't believe you're the worst, like, atheist type of a character out there, this and that, or shuns or laughs at kamma, this and that. Say that to yourself. But genuinely look at what that is doing to your heart. But you must say it. To yourself while you're looking at the mirror. Pick one eye. Just, just look at one pupil. 
as you're saying these things. And see what it does to you. Something like, you know, you've put up with a lot. You have had a very rough time. Let's say rough childhood or well, I'm, I'm going to go through traffic. I'm going to be driving to get to a job that I don't like, for example. Or um, I'm going to my job and, and I'm, I'm so happy that I have a job, or I have a car, or I have a bus ticket, or I'm able to use my legs to go outside and get the paper, or go get a gallon of milk, let's say. I'm able to do that still. Others are not. That was great that you said hi to your neighbor, or helped her with the trash. There's other neighbors who aren't doing that, but I did. And I don't usually do that, but I did. Wow, that's a moment for you to acknowledge yourself for that kindness. So you're already celebrating the fact that you're alive. Now, the more you do this, the more you're going to be surprised as to how many occasions there are during, in a day where you can intensify the level of joy that you can experience without having any outside incredibly you know out of this world type of situations happening first because you are self-generating this so acknowledging simple things factual things oh wow i have five fingers and they all work fine great none of them are broken there's no blisters wow i have nails are you kidding me wow my hand is not so always it depends i mean sometimes you have something that is really outstanding that's happening to you you win the lottery or you just get a, you get promoted um you fall in love, let's say, with this you know, a person that you really wanted to be you know, in your life, etc. So things can be far greater in uh, intensity, maybe, or significance. Fine. Celebrate those as well. That's a beautiful word. Celebrate oneself. I once was uh, back in the 90s, 90s? No. I think early 2000s. Uh, there was a fellow uh, therapist. Uh, he was a professor. And uh, he said, um, he, he was giving a lecture somewhere. And I was there. And he said the words, you must celebrate yourself. And I just loved it. I still remember. It was a beautiful statement, so simple. So when you are acknowledging the good, you are celebrating yourself. You are celebrating the choices that you have made that got you this far. And you will add more fuel into the emotional tank of your life. Which helps you unfold and grow even more. And commit intentional actions that are wholesome more and more and more. And don't wait for someone like me to come and acknowledge that. Check in with your emotions. They are the best indicators of where you're at. This is not positive psychology. This is not auto-suggestion. This is not self-hypnosis. Not at all. You must feel the intensity of it. It's like tasting delicious food, which you prepared for yourself. You took the time to check the ingredients, this and that, and you prepared it joyously. That's a perfect example of kamma working its magic, which is no magic at all. Just some thoughts.